My, oh, there we go. There I am. Uh, we have a few cards that are going around the church this morning. We have a serve team card. These just have some things that um, we want to get you involved. We want to get you plugged in. We want to get you planted here at Living Waters, and we want to use you. Um, so uh, these are serve team cards. If you'll just fill them out. Caitlin, um, the redheaded girl, is going to stand at the door at the end of service, and she's going to take these from you. Um, she's not the only redhead we have here. So, um, And then we have these little cards that we made up for our Easter service. Easter is next week. Easter is next week. And we are really excited about it. We want to pack the house out because it's Easter. You know, um, we want to see souls saved on Easter. How great would that be? So um, if you'll take a few of these, give them to your family members, give them to whoever. Even if they don't come, they might check it out on Facebook later and it might help them in. They might come later. Who knows? Um, but we just want to be a light and we just want to make a difference. And um, if you'll just do that for us. But right now, we need to get started with service. So if you'll stand with us, we are going to get started this morning. We are going to get started with some praise and some worship. How many know that when he saved you, there is a new name that is written down in your And it's mine. It's mine. And see, when I came to Jesus and when I um, gave him my heart, I gave him who I was. And I gave him me so that he could use me for his glory. And I just want to do that this morning. So if you will just worship with us.
going to do what needs to be done. And God, we're going to give you glory, praise, and honor in Jesus' wonderful name. Will you just lift your hand one more time? I sense him in this place. I sense him in this place. I know that he is here. I know that he is here today. Oh, hallelujah, let him touch you right now. This church has, uh, has a few needs. I know that God's going to meet them. And uh, so this offering today is going to uh, help a device be put on this system so that they said a few sneeze and kill the germs. That's pretty good, isn't it? And so I want you to feel even more safe about coming to church. So a few sneeze and kill the germs. Hallelujah. But, uh, and so I know that God's going to meet the need today. Here, man, here's my offering. If you gentlemen just get those plates, and I want you just to pray about it. Give is under the Lord. And I'll assure you that you cannot outgive God. Somebody say amen. amen. Brother Harry, listen, pray. I'll be rejoicing what you're Look at your neighbor and uh, tell them that.
Look at somebody and say, I'm not going to hear the Lord. I'm not going to hear the Lord. And try to look at somebody and say, I came to receive something from the Lord. I ain't going to get it. How many is intending on getting it? Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord.
John is probably my favorite book. The other three synoptic gospels deal with a lot of what Jesus said and what he done. John takes us to who Jesus is. See, it's more than what he says and does, it's who he is. Hello, somebody. He is. I tell you, I'm about to get excited. But John 1 and 1 says, In the beginning was the Word. Anybody believe that? Amen. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things. He was created in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness, to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which gives light to every man, every man coming into the world. I like what verse 14 says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Hallelujah. You can be seated. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise His holy, wonderful, wonderful name. In the beginning, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Can I tell you, He is still God. Yes. He's not just a was or a has been, but he is even currently. Somebody yes. say amen. amen. Yes. I cannot help but understand that this scripture brings into perspective the gospel and the creation. He says, in the beginning was the word. Can I tell you, that is absolutely a mouthful. Yes. It is certainly a mindful. According to one internet source, as far as the news, they are they, that this is what they say. We consider dusting off the Bible, off the dictionary, and going from A1 to Z. However, there are an estimated about 171,146 words currently in the use of the English language. 171,146. According to the Oxford English Dictionary, not to mention, they say, 47,156 obsolete words according to 2018. According to, another, uh, according to another website, they said if we want to talk about how many words there are in the English, then there are three key numbers to remember. More than one million total words exist. About 170,000 words in current use, and there are around 20 to 30,000 words that are used by each individual person. Did you realize you knew so many words? According to another place, here are the counting of the words in the English dictionary by language. According to English, there are again 171,000. This one says 476. <coughs> Words In the Russian language, there are approximately 150,000. The Spanish, there are 93,000. In the Chinese, there's 85,568 words that are used. Studies have shown that the average English native speaker knows about 20,000 words with university educated people knowing around 40,000 words. He said, what is your point? Just look at someone. I said, bear with you. I'm going somewhere. Just hold on. 
when actually speaking with everyday writing, if you count emails and you count notes and you count letters and the list goes on, there are about 5,000 very common words that are used repeatedly. In fact, the top 10 business languages of the world in 2008 by gross domestic product are as follows. The English uh, is about 28,088 U.S. billions in GDP as far as the English language. Chinese is 26.56 in U.S. billions. Spanish is 8.18. And the fourth in ranking is the Arabic at 7.1. According to July the 7th of 2020, COVID is the most used word in 2020. Yeah. Anybody surprised about that one? No. Coronavirus in U.S. political terms dominate the most used words of the year so far. COVID is the top word of 2020 so far according to Global, Global Language Monitor, which is an American data research company that tracks trends in the worldwide use of the English language. If the truth were known and the truth were really told, most of us have come across so many words in our lifetime that we have forgotten more than what we remember. Amen. How many would agree with that? Some words mean much to us while others don't mean much at all. I think it's quite interesting to learn new words as we go along, just to expand our knowledge. I learned a new word the other week, and it's called endemic. You know what that means? It simply means belonging or native to a particular people or a country, according to Webster Dictionary. Can I tell you that the COVID is now an endemic? Uh -huh. It's going to be here. It's here to stay. Hello, somebody. Amen. Guess what that word relates to now? The virus that we're dealing with. Right. Yes. You see, we can learn and will learn many words throughout our lifetime. But the one word that we must not forget is Jesus. He is the word. Somebody say amen. He's not just a word. He is the word. Somebody say amen. I'm thankful today that I know him. Do you know him? I remember coming up as a child and as a teenager, there was a saying that would, you know, would go around in, 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 different, in different groups and they would say, word or word up. How many yeah. remember that? Uh, yeah. Word up. We thought we were cool if we said that. <laughs> now these young people have no clue what we're saying. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> You know, we, we thought it was cool to say it, you know. And, and, and some people will wear themselves out in the church, you know, and, and trying to get somebody to give them a word, trying to give them something that's going to help them. But I'm giving you a word today. And it is the word of God. Somebody say amen. It is the Son of the living God, and His name is Jesus. Just saying that word means that I am not, I'm just not saying something, but 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 I am saying something of utmost importance. Yes, Can I tell you something? He is the most important thing yes, in he, our say life. Right. Yes, say right. John is saying that the word he is referring to is of utmost importance. In other words, what I'm telling you, he's saying Jesus. you need to pay attention. You need to listen. Come on. Yes. You, you, you need to stand on, at attention because John is saying that what he's talking about is the most important subject that you will ever hear about. Yeah. What John is referencing can and will change your life. You see, Jesus, he is the answer for you. He is the answer for your life. He is the answer for any and every area of your life. He is, somebody say amen. He's the only one that can make a difference. Yes, wow, that's the truth. You may think that a man is the answer. You may think that a woman is the answer. I'm preaching better than yourself. Good word. Amen. You may think that your earthly physician is the answer. Oh no. But can I remind you about what John is talking about today? He's saying that he is the answer. He is 
is the word. Oh, yeah. You see, Hallelujah. one word from Jesus Hallelujah. can transform Hallelujah. your life. Yes. It can transform yes. your marriage. Yes. It can transform yes. your situations. Yes. It can transform your circumstances. Yes. And the list yes. goes on. Yes, amen. 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 Praise God. I want to express my belief in what John is saying. I concur with what John is saying. Amen. Yes. He is the word. Yes, amen. John, John says in John 14 and 6, he says that he is the way, yes. mm -hmm. he is the truth, yes. mm -hmm. and he is the life. Yes. There is an old song that goes like this, I must tell Jesus. Jesus. Yes. I must tell Jesus. Mm -hmm. I cannot bear these burdens alone. I don't know about anybody else, but in this house this morning, I cannot bear this stuff alone. I cannot do this on my own. It does not matter how much I try. The more you stick your nose in it, the more you stick your mouth on it, the worse it will become. But if you'll just give it unto Jesus, hallelujah, he will take the problems up and reverse them. Somebody say amen. I'm telling you, he can heal your body. He can heal your mind. He can touch your situation. He can touch your marriage. He can touch your life. He is the word. Somebody say amen. song goes on to say that in my distress, he kindly will help me. Yes. He ever loves and cares for his own. Yes. In other words, what John is saying is that this word will transform you if you'll let it. Yes. Amen. <laughs> he, he's not just what he says, he is. Hallelujah. That song goes on to say, I must tell Jesus all of my yes. troubles. Yes. He is a kind and compassionate friend. If yes. I but ask him, he will deliver and make of my troubles quickly an end. Amen. I must tell Jesus, tempted and tried, I need a great Savior. Yes. One who can help my burdens to bear. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Yes. I must tell Jesus. You see, the word, of, the word is God's way of communicating. What John is saying here is that the word is communicating the language of God. He is communicating the love of God. If it had not been for John, we might not know John 3, 16. For God so loved this world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him would not perish but have ever Hallelujah. Somebody lift your head and bless you. He goes on in verse 17 of that same chapter and says, For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. John has a unique way of putting this. He said, I'm not just going to focus on what Jesus says, but I'm going to focus on who Jesus is. Hallelujah. He's more than just a story. He is the King of Glory. I'm glad I know who Jesus is. The gospel traces the way that this takes place in Jesus of Nazareth. In the words that he speaks, in the actions that he performs, and, and the death that he dies. You see, the story unfolds through controversy. Readers they know from the outset that Jesus is the Word of God, but those whom Jesus speaks during His ministry do not. You see, some are intrigued by Him and follow, while others are initially impressed by His miracles, but later find His claims to have come from God to be incomprehensible or, or blasphemous. John tells the story in, of Jesus in retrospect, including insights into Jesus' life. Uh, and, and the work that only emerged after his death and resurrection. He recognizes that Jesus' words and actions were interpreted in conflicting ways. And at the end of his public ministry, he was widely misunderstood. Can I tell you, he is still widely misunderstood. Oh, but to us who believe in him, he is live. Somebody say amen. He makes crooked paths straight. He makes a way where there is no way. He may, 
I'm telling you, he is. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. The gospel encounters readers to grapple with Jesus' identity for at least two, two, two reasons. One is the promise that those who come to Jesus, that come to believe in him, will find life in his name. If this is true, then those who seek life will want to know who the giver of life is. Yes. The other reason is that Jesus calls readers to a way of life. Not only is he the life, but he is the way of life. Hallelujah. I'm glad to know this morning that he makes everything in my life all right. He makes everything in my life better. I'm not telling you that we're not going to go through problems, but I'm telling you I have one that can help me and carry me through them and take me to the other side. Somebody say amen. I have a friend. You see, you see, to believe is to follow. And those who embark on this path will want to understand who it is that beckons them. The prologue tells of the Word of God becoming flesh in Jesus. We have seen, though, that a word or a logos or a logos is a form of communication. And although the term can have a wider range of meaning, it is commonly used for a, a, a spoken word or a, a, a message. And here the context recalls the opening of Jesus, or Genesis rather, where God spoke and the world came into being. By that word, God communicates with the world. Can I tell you, that's how that God is communicating with the world today, is through Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Still communicating. Still making an impact. He said, they that call on the name of the Lord shall yes. be saved. Mm -hmm. Blind Bartimaeus understood this well. When he's sitting there blind, cannot see physically, Jesus is coming by. He hears about Jesus coming. Yes. He hears his voice. Hallelujah. He begins to call upon him. He begins to cry out. And it made the crowd mad. Sometimes when you cry out to the Lord, it's going to make people around you mad. But don't worry about it. Hallelujah. You just keep crying out until you receive from Jesus. And all of a sudden, it gets the attention of Jesus. Amen. It gets the attention. And they say, you need to be still. And the more they said that, the louder he got. Yes. Amen. He wanted an encounter. I wish you'd always get people like that with him. They would come in and say, listen, I don't care what you're going to do, but I'm going to get what I need from God. I don't care how crazy it makes me look. I don't care how you think about me. But listen, what I've got going on, I need more than what you can give me. I need what he can give me. Somebody say, man. I don't just need you, but I need him. Hallelujah. The louder he got. Until finally he got exactly. He said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Hallelujah. He wanted to know this life. He wanted to know this way of life. John is getting ready to explain to us the way of life. That in him is life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But God communicates with the world through this word. You know, sometimes we've also seen that a word can be differentiated and yet identified with the one who speaks it. People normally speak of someone's identity by saying that a person is, or else they refer to a relationship by saying that a person is with someone. But in John's head spinning introduction, both are true. The Word was God, and the Word was with God. A person who speaks a Word has an existence outside that Word. 
Can I tell you, let me preach about that just a minute. In other words, he's not just the word, but he is the very existence outside of that word. Can I tell you, not only does his word bring life, but he brings life. Somebody say amen. I'm glad to know that Jesus is whatever we need him to be. Boy, I've walked with him. How many walked with him? I, I, just like I explained to you in times past, I've been going down the road and I call upon the name of the Lord. And all of a sudden, I feel him as he's like, he just sits right down beside me. I tell you, there have been times I've called on his name and I've felt him. And I felt his presence. You see, because he's not just a word, but he is the very existence all around that word. I want to tell you, he's my comforter. He's my strength. He's my encouragement. He's the lifter up of my head. Somebody say amen. He's my life. He's my salvation. He is the Son of God. He is the Son of glory. I'm telling you, He is. Somebody say amen. John said, I want you to understand. I've been a witness. I know who he is. And I want you to know who he is. I want you to experience him. Can I tell you something? I want you to experience Jesus as I am. Yes. Thank you, oh, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Has an existence outside that word. You see, Jesus has always been. You see, there have been other ones that have come along and said they were. And those same people have left this world. <laughs> uh -huh. And they were a has-been. Uh -huh. But notice that Jesus still is. Come on, he is. <laughs> because he's the existence outside just that word. Amen. Yet those who hear a person's word, here's the person. Uh -huh. You see, when a person's word affects something, the person affects something. I'm glad that when Jesus speaks into our life, uh, my blessed God, it affects me. On, I cannot leave. And when you find people throughout the Word of God, when they met Jesus, they were never the same. That's right. That's right. That's right. You cannot meet Jesus and ever be the same. Right. You will either leave better yes. or you will leave worse. Right. We find yes. a rich young ruler when he comes to Jesus. He says, what must I do? Jesus, I tell you. He said, take everything you got, sell it, give the money to the poor. Uh -huh. The man turned around and walked away. Uh -huh. You never, ever hear about him again. Amen. Now, whether Jesus really intended for him to do that, I'm not very sure. But I know this. The thing that Jesus was trying to get him to understand is where is your heart? Yes. Uh -huh. yeah, that's right. So where's your heart today? Amen. Well, I love Jesus, Praise dude. God. Come on, man. Yeah. Come on. I sure do. Bless the Lord. You see, when you love Jesus, you will. You will race yes. after him. That's right. yes. My, my, my. Bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Similarly, the word can be differentiated from God. Yet when the word brings things into being, it is God bringing them into being. When the world is addressed by the word, it is addressed by God. You see, I like it. The Gospel of John reminds me of the Gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes. Yes. As I said a moment ago, I think John 3 and 16 sums up the Gospel in superb fashion. This verse reminds us of the love that God has for us. For God so loved the world. You say, Pastor, does he still love the world now even as... As, as hateful and yes. as, 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 as bad as things are getting and, and they mock him and they laugh about him and, and, and they're trying every way they can to suppress, absolutely. Yes. He loved yes. us that much yes. that he yes. sent his only begotten son yes. to be our sacrifice. Right. You see, we've all been born in the sin. We've all sinned and right. fallen short oh, of yes. the glory of God. Yes. Yes. Every one of us yeah, have our own issues. Yeah. Oh, my. Every one of us have our own problems. Yeah. I heard a man tell me one time, said, we don't have problems, we have opportunities. I said, well, I don't know what world you're living in, but I have problems. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> Bless you, 
We all have our own issues, but here's the deal. God still loves us. And John paints that, I think, very perfectly for us. You see, the Old Testament reveals to us the coming of the Messiah. The New Testament lets us know that he is here while the book of John seems to sum it all up. If the book of John had not been written, then we may not know about the love of God that he has for us only as John can put it. We may not know that God sent his son like John talks about. It would definitely put a different perspective on things. You see, John 14 goes on to describe beautifully how that Jesus has gone to prepare a place for us. That he said, where I am there, you can be also. Hallelujah. I believe that the word of the word of God would be missing an integral part of the gospel without John's writing present. I think that Christianity would have a different spin on it, if you will. You see, some of the major themes of the Gospel of John are eternal life. Eternal life. Witness how that we are to be a witness. John was a witness uh, unto, unto us. And we are to be a witness unto those around us. Hello, somebody. Our identity in Christ. He talks about the identity that we have in Christ. And of course, signs that, that he talks about. John reveals to us about the life and the death, about truth, and how that God is true. He, he lets us know about sacrifice and the sacrifice that Christ made. He tells us about language and about communication. You see, there is also navigation in this book. Jesus Christ being the Word of God and the Son of God dominates the gospel of John. He said, I'm not going to just talk about what he says. I'm going to talk about who that he is. John's gospel is one of narration, if you will. He, he recounts and interprets the ministry of Jesus and lets us know that when his disciples and others throughout the world had seen him, then they had seen the Father because they are one. I'm not quite sure we would know the love of God to the extent we do if it had not been for the beloved John. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <coughs> John emphasizes the identity of Christ. The early church father Clement of Alexander called John the spiritual gospel because of its deep insight into Jesus' divinity. John focused on the identity of Jesus. Who is Jesus? Who is Jesus? This is a much debated subject because of the complexity of his legacy. In fact, his early disciples regarded him as a Jewish teacher from Galilee. He taught in synagogues and ran into conflict with other Jewish leaders. So are acclaimed him uh, some acclaimed him as a prophet and told of his ability to work miracles. Some thought of him as the Messiah, the anointed king whom God had sent to rule his people. Yet his death by crucifixion uh, shattered the usual paradigm of kingship and redefined what it meant for him to reign. Son of God was also a royal title. But in light of the resurrection, many deserved a deeper sense of what this meant. A more integral connection between Jesus and the God that he called his father. He was a witness. It was he was a witness. John is called the beloved, fits so well with what he writes. John had a unique ability to help us to see through his eyes about Jesus and about the Messiah and knowing that God is love. God is love. You see, God loves you today. Jesus loves you today. Doesn't matter what you've done. Doesn't matter. Oh my. Doesn't matter what you've done this week. 
It, it doesn't matter how, how you've messed up or, right. or, 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 or what you've done or, 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 or anything, any, any of that stuff. Jesus loves you no matter what. In fact, he loves us so much he don't want to leave us in the condition we're in, but he offers us a way. Somebody say amen. He, he loves you. The enemy will come to you and say, oh, he doesn't love you. You've messed up. You went too far. You this, you that. Mm -hmm. But Jesus loves you yes. today. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Amen. I think he writes from experience. I think he writes from experience. You see, it's hard to tell somebody about something if you've never experienced it. Amen. Amen. I said, it's hard to tell somebody about something when you've never experienced it. Yeah. You know, I've had some people tell me when going through stuff, just suck it up. Although that's easy for you to say. Yeah. If you've never been in these shoes, if you've never been here, if you've never done this, you have no idea what you're talking about. But I can tell you this. <laughs> I have somebody with me all the way. Somebody say amen. You see, Answering the question, who is Jesus, mattered because people were in our call to put their faith in him. Yes. What was said about Jesus has implications for the way that they understood their lives and their hopes. If Jesus was a teacher, then he provided instruction to those who needed it. He can move people from ignorance to understanding. But what if the human situation was more deeply flawed? Did Jesus provide something more than instruction? As the crucified and the risen king, did he wield the power that delivers people from sin and death? There were so many prophets in Israel's history, and they brought a word from the Lord. So what set Jesus apart? Did he speak God's word as others did, or did he embody that word? And I tell you, he embodied it the word. That's right. He didn't just speak, but he was. Hallelujah. He was the revelation. Somebody say amen. He was the life. He was the only begotten of the Father. Sent here by a virgin. Next week we're going to celebrate the fact that he came and lived and died, but he didn't stay there. He rose from the dead and he's seated on the right hand of the Father making intercession for us. is thankful. He's a witness. The Bible concludes in John 21 and 24. We know that his testimony is true. It is true. And all through the word, all through the gospel of John, we find that, that he is the word. I preached it so many times about John 4 when he met the woman at the well. He revealed to her exactly who he is. Yes. That he has no respecter of persons. Right. Oh my. Oh, you see, we, we've, got, we've, got, we've got such a, a diversion today. Uh -huh. You know, we've got, we've got such a, a division today yes. in, in the United States and around the world and they're trying to say, well, this group and this group, and we're going to separate this group and that group, and this group is better than this group, and that better, that, 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 and, and everything. But can I tell you, Jesus said, there, there, there is another, neither Jew nor Greek. Somebody say amen. Right. In other words, we're all in this thing together. We're all human. Somebody say amen. And God loves every single person. All lives matter. Somebody say amen. Jesus, he loves you enough. He's big enough that he spoke this world into existence. But he's small enough to live in your heart and in your life. Somebody say amen. That's how much he loves us. He loves us enough that he made a way of escape. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. He is life. And in him is life. Somebody say amen. John says, he loves you that much. Yes, Lord. Amen. John says he loves you so much that Come on now. Amen. 
He's going to prepare a place for you. Who else would do that? Who, who else would love you that much to prepare a way out? You see, Adam and Eve brought sin into this world. Everything that you see going on this wrong, don't blame God. It That's is right. nothing more than sin. Amen. I've heard time and again, why would God allow Amen. this to happen? Why would God allow that to happen? Why did God do this? And why did God do that? Amen. Last time I checked, we're still living in a fallen world. Yes. This thing is 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 has been has been reaped with sin. And of course, you know the Bible says sin brings forth what? So all because Adam and Eve messed up in the garden, that's the reason that things happen. It ain't God. I'm a boy. I don't understand why this baby is born like this. I don't understand why 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 this happened to my uh, people. Why this? Why that? Why 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 why? It, listen, we're living in a fallen world. Yes, we are. But Jesus came to redeem us. Amen. He is the answer. Can I tell you, he's the answer to yes, washing. He is. Yes, he is. John tells us he's the answer to washing. For God so loved the world. Right? He's the answer for every senator. Right. Every congressman. Yes. Every congresswoman. Somebody yes. say amen. amen. He's, the, he's the answer for every governor. Yes. He's the answer for every state. Yes. He's the answer for every country. Yes. He's the answer for every nation. Yes. He's the answer for every nationality. Yes. I'm telling you that Jesus yes. is, and John tells us that. Yes. Yes. He says he didn't send his son in the world to condemn the world, but that the world right. through him, yes. through him, yes. might be saved. Yes. Yes. John loves us. That he tells us in John 17 about how that Jesus prays for his people. He intercedes for his people. He tells us, he said, I wish that all men would pray and not faint. He tells us, he said, that he's not going to leave us alone. That's right. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you that Jesus, through the eyes of John, is the deliverer. He's the redeemer. He's the revealer. He's the son of man, the son of God. He, he is the Lord of glory. Somebody say amen. He is the light. And he brings light into the darkness. I'm telling you, he's talking about eternal life. These are things that John gives us about Jesus that we can know personally. Somebody say amen. Praise God. <coughs> but we gotta, we gotta trust him. Yes. We gotta, we gotta, you know, the Bible says to cast our care upon him, for he cares for us. There's a lot involved in that. There's a lot involved in that. We have to completely give it unto him. So a lot of times we think we can handle this thing on our own. <coughs> I don't know why I'm going here, but I'm going here, so just bear with me. A lot of times we think we can fight this thing, we can do it alone. He says, You're not going to be able to do it. Hallelujah. John allows us to see that there is only one true God. Hello? Amen. There's only one true God. John 5 gives us the witness of the Word. There is witness of works. There is witness of the Father. There is witness of the Scripture. He allows us to be informed about the resurrection. He gives us the humanity of Jesus and also the divinity of Jesus. Hallelujah. John 4 gives us a beautiful uh, uh, description that Jesus makes no distinction between man and woman. Amen. I, I'm getting ready to go somewhere, so just bear with me. Please, say, pray for the preacher. 
the identity crisis going on in the show. Come on, come on, go ahead. Yeah, that's good. I shouldn't go here, but I'm going. Come on, that's going. Just bear with me. Go ahead. It's right here. I got to come out. Go ahead. Go ahead. We don't know if we're a man or a woman. Come on. It depends on which day of the week is to how we feel. Come on. Come on. But can I tell you something? In Jesus, uh, hallelujah, we've been created as we are. And what's amazing is, is no matter, even, if, even if you want to be a man or a woman today or tomorrow, he still loves you. Yes, he Amen. Does. That's the beautiful thing. That's right. But the beautiful thing is, even it goes past that, he doesn't just love you to stay in the same state you're in, but he loves you enough to change you. He loves you to be He said, I, I'm not going to just let you stay here, but I'm going to transform your life if you just call upon me. I'm thankful that in Jesus I have an identity. I am somebody. Yes, you are. Amen. You are somebody. Look at your neighbor and say, I am somebody. I am some, look at some, I am somebody. Oh, yes. He loves me just like I am. And I am somebody in here. Doesn't matter how you feel about me. Only matters about he feels. That's right. What does he think? That's right. See, we're too busy trying to please people when we don't be trying to please him. Amen. If I please him, it doesn't matter who I displease. Right. But if I please everybody That's else and I displease him, on, then I've got a problem. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Right. And John says, he is our redeemer. He's, he's, he's our revealer. He is our witness. He is our life. He is life. He said, in him is life. Can I tell you something? I, you know, I, I don't know what it's like to live in the world in some of these other areas. I had my own issues, and I was just as much a sinner as somebody else. It, it, let, me, let me just go right here then. It doesn't matter if you're a liar or if you're a drunk. It's all sin. There is no big and little sin. There is no white and black sin. I wish you'd help me in this place. Some of you are looking at me like I'm nuts. Sin is sin. It doesn't matter how you slice it, how you dice it, how you, you know, mix it up. It's sin. And all of us have had our issues. But in him, I didn't know life until I started in him. That's right. I have a reason to get up in the morning. Why? Because Jesus loves me. I have a reason to get up. Some people get up just because they have to, and whatever the reason is, but, but I have a reason. It's because this is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. In Him is life. People think that living is, is, is for a, a bag of dope. That they they, they think that living is in a bottle. If they can, I'm just using you that right now. Go ahead. That they, they think that living is 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 trying to find love in all the wrong places. Uh -huh. They they think that living is 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 all the money. Uh, you know, money's going to make me happy. You know, and money's going to solve all my problems. And, and the word does back up that the word answers a, a, a lot of things, but it is not the answer. That's right. Hello, somebody. So we're looking for all that stuff, and we yeah. think that that's living. And you know the thing about it is, when you come off of a high, you still got those problems. That's right, Amen. Come on now, yes you do. When you come off of a drunken stupor, you still got those problems. Yes, Does that mean I still have problems serving God? Absolutely. But you know what? I have somebody that can bear it. I have somebody that I can throw them off onto, and when I cast them on Him. I don't have to necessarily worry about them anymore. He gives me in, in place of my problems, in place of my cares. He gives me peace that passes understanding. That means I don't have to try to figure it out. I don't try to have to work it out. I just point to him and realize that it will work out for my goals. John says he's all this and more. Yeah. You ever heard that 
just see that he's all that the bag of chips and she's all that the bag of chips. You ever heard that? See, that was the thing when I was coming up to that yeah. probably old oh, now. Yeah. And he's all that. There's a song that said, He's all I need. Yes, yes. yes he is. Amen. He's all I need. Jesus is all I need. He's all I need. He's all I need. Jesus is all I need. Say with me, dear Lord. He's all. No other king could vanquish the war horse or silence the warrior's rage while riding the lowly back of a donkey. No other king could break the dominion of darkness, the tyranny of evil, with a reign of grace and a kingdom of peace. No other king could give his life for the redemption of rebels, his wealth to welcome the outcast. Jesus is that King, the King of glory, Son of the living God. Not just another King, not just another prophet, not just another teacher. He was the 
one the world had been waiting for. The one to deliver us from captivity, the son of David and Abraham's chosen seed. He is the goal of the Mosaic law, Yahweh in the flesh. He is the one to establish God's reign and rule, to heal the sick, give sight to the blind, freedom to the prisoners, and proclaim good news to the poor. This Jesus was the creator come to earth and the beginning of a new creation. He embodied the covenant, fulfilled the commandments, and reversed the curse. This Jesus is the Christ that God spoke of to the serpent, the one prefigured to Noah in the flood, the one promised to Abraham, the one guaranteed to Moses before he died, the one promised to David during his reign, the one revealed to Isaiah as a suffering servant, the one predicted through the prophets and prepared for through John the Baptist. He is the Father's Son, Savior of the world, and substitute for our sins. More loving, more holy, and more wonderfully terrifying than we ever thought possible. He is our Jesus, and there is no other king like him. He is our God, our glory, our victorious Savior. There is no other king like him. There is no other king.